Welcome to the Good, the Scars and the Rugby in partnership with our good friends at Vodafone. We're back from sunny Northamptonshire and we're back in the studio this week. And if it isn't obvious already, Elmer is not here. We are both bricking it because we are flying solo. This could be complete and utter carnage, more so than usual, but I think we all be all right, will we? To be fair, if Hasks and Tins can do it without Alex, I feel like we've got an all right job to do. So, yeah, we'll see how we go. Yeah, and we've got an absolute treat of a guest with us today, one of our very good friends. That Two things that make her distinct. The pineapple that's quite usually on top of her head, but we're a bit annoyed because it's not there today, but maybe we'll get that out of her later. Um, and the unbelievable abs that she throws all over Instagram for us all to see and all makes us all very, very jealous. We're not sure that there's ever been a hooker with a rig so good, to be honest, um, but here we are again. So since playing at 15, these girls were playing together at 15, unbelievable. Ripping up as centre partners, for those that don't know. Um, she's got 82 caps for her country. She's won a World Cup. She's won five Six Nations, two Premier 15s titles. She's also got her own company that she set up while she's been doing all this, and this week she's announced her retirement. She's the one with the pineapple, our very good friend, Vicky Fleetwood. Yay, How are you, my friend? Wild. Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Um, finally over all the, uh, the tears from the weekend. <laughs> How has your week been? Has it just been an absolute whirlwind? Yeah, um, honestly, like I was so overcome by just all the emotions that, that came with kind of announcing my retirement. Um, I think I'd readied myself for it. It was something that, you know, when you come to making that decision, it's not it's not just on a whim. It's something that, you know, it's it's back and forth. Do I, don't I? Um, and yeah, I'd readied m myself for it. I'd spoken to lots of different people about it, but when it finally came to it, um, yeah, all the kind words and everything, I was just an absolute mess on Sunday. Um, so I think I'm finally over it now. <laughs> I think it, you're right, because making the decision is one thing but then having the onslaught either from social media or all your good friends or the rugby world is quite a different thing isn't it how was the weekend because you're at the Saris game weren't you yeah so um when I decided that I was going to retire Alex Osterbury the um Saris head coach said to me like well, well what is it that you want from us like you know to to say thank you and and this and that and he was like do you want to play again do you want like one final game do you want to come on the pitch what do you want to do and at the time, I, I just said, like, I don't want anything. I just kind of want to do the Homer Simpson, like, <laughs> into, <laughs> into, the, into bush. the bush. <laughs> just, like, leave me to it. Um, and I'm all good. Um, but, yeah, a couple of weeks prior to, to the game at the weekend, he um, he called me and he was just like, look, I'd really like to, to get you to our last home game of the season. Um, like, how do you feel about that? And we just kind of back and forth around that. And he just said, like, I think we owe you a send off so um yeah i'm really glad that i did it prior to that had you attended many of the games or had you literally just gone taking a real step back no i hadn't been to any um so f since my injury um i'd been in and around kind of rehabbing and things like that um but hadn't been involved in any of the rugby sessions was just like i've i've made my decision don't want to go back to rugby um got myself back running like doing all the stuff in the gym that I need to do. But I just thought, I know that if anything's gonna sway me, it'll be being back on the pitch with the girls and, and training. And I just thought, I, I don't want to, like I've made my decision, I need to kind of stick with that. Um, I know there's been plenty of girls in the past that have made their like announcement that they're gonna retire and then they've come back the next season. So I didn't want to do that. Um, and yeah, I just kind of stayed away from it and actually, I think that was the best thing that I could have done. Um, when you're kind of half in it, half out, like I think you're just going to miss it like crazy and then you kind of double back on whether it's the right decision or not. But I knew that it was the right time. So, yeah, I'm proud that I stuck with it. <laughs> How have you got there, right? Because basically, obviously, this week we've spoken to you a fair bit. I was there on Sunday. We can talk about that moment later, <laughs> by the way. But I was there Sunday and um, I went to training and I wasn't able to train like yesterday, just gone. And then I came home and I was like gutted in such a foul mood. And I was thinking, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to retire. Because everyone <laughs> says, when you know, you know. Like, how did you get there? Like, what was it about it that, that you thought, now I'm definitely done? I think just over a number of seasons with injury, with non-selection, with there's so, been so many different kind of reasons, just not been enjoying it as much. And then you just kind of, the conversations that you have, like, is it kind of giving me what I feel like I'm putting in and like is kind of 
all the hard work that I'm putting it in like worth it. Um, the fact that traveling to Sari's, it's not just around the corner for me, like an hour and a half each way, um, having to do that three times a week on top of like playing, um, you know, that's something that you go, if I'm not really enjoying it, why am I putting all this time and effort into it? Um, and it just got to the point where I just thought, you know, I, I want to go and focus on, on the other stuff and I want to put my energy into doing the coaching. Um, I love personal training. So that's something that I've done for years and years now. And I've kind of kept it up alongside playing, but it's something that I want to go and focus on. And, um, I've got that client base. So yeah, it's something that I can kind of put my energy into. Do you so. think the injury was like what almost tipped you over the edge, if I can use that expression? Because you have been really unlucky with injury, obviously then not being selected for the World Cup and then getting injured and a pretty big, a big boy, wasn't it? It wasn't yeah. just a little kind of muscle tear or anything. It was a big one. Do you think that was, did you realise quite soon after that, that actually maybe this, this is me? Yeah, so I actually, <laughs> I actually went into the physio room at like with my broken leg, ankle, everything, um, having been carried off the pitch, and I just said I'm done. Like I made that decision there and then, and I think a lot of people do make that decision, yeah. <laughs> but then kind of backtrack and go, no, that was the emotion that kind of made me decide, and and for me it just, I d I didn't go back on it. I just thought actually that is, that is me done, and um, there's only so many times you can get knocked back, and I just feel like. Um, that was, yeah, that was the big one. And if I'd have had that injury, you know, years before, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. It's, you know, any other injury you go through. I mean, you went through the same yourself. You just, you rehab it and all you're thinking of is, when can I get back on the pitch? Can I just say though, our rehab looked very different because how many days was it after surgery that you were back in the gym, back doing ridiculous things in your cast? I was 100% <laughs> on my sofa making an indent in it for about two two weeks Fleet at least. <laughs> Fleet was doing burpees, well, one-legged. <laughs> yeah, Fleet was doing one-legged burpees, one-legged cleans, the whole thing. I think for me, that's just like, for my headspace, like I had to be just in the gym doing something um, or I would have just gone crazy. So <laughs> that was the only reason I was in there. Do you think if you hadn't have got injured in that at that time, so obviously World Cup selection, we can talk about it if you want, we don't have to if you <laughs> don't. Um, after that selection, obviously, and then to pick up that injury, like it was brutal. Like let's let's be fair, like when we were playing, when the girls were all out there, it was a pretty tough gig. Mm -hmm. And I know that it was all of our decisions to do that. But do you think if that injury hadn't have come, you it maybe would have been a little bit different, or do you think you were always kind of getting that way? <sighs> It was it was in the back of my mind that I was like, do you know what, like I, I'm done anyway. Um, then I just kind of put my big girl pants on, was like, suck it up, um, go back and play. And I actually really enjoyed um, the training and stuff without kind of all the internationals there, and just just really enjoying it and getting stuck in. And then it was actually the first game back that I decided, okay, yeah, I'll I'll play, um, and was loving it. Like I was playing at eight. Having a Flying, having right? a great time, um, and then yeah, not long into the second half, snapped my leg, which was lovely. Um, so yeah, that was that was kind of that was the last time I played, and um, yeah, hadn't hadn't got that urge to to get back into it. Have you had it since? Because I know, like you speak speaking to Santa, <laughs> obviously you still see her a lot. Do you miss it? It's any part of you. All the girls have been trying to get her involved in our last club game of the season. She's having absolutely none of it. But she says, not one part of me. And I think that's a really nice place to be, isn't it? Where yeah. you actually, you're yeah. not looking over your shoulder thinking, oh, could I still do that? And I think the only time that I kind of thought, it was more of just being like, I wish that I could have done that was at the France game um, mm. at Twickenham. And just kind of, the, I was in the crowd and just the amazing atmosphere like it would have been great to have been part of that, yeah. but the rest of it, no. <laughs> um, so after making my decision every time that it was like really wet and windy outside and I was thinking, oh, everyone's going training, what a shame, like I can just sit inside <laughs> or if I want to train, I can go in gym, which is inside. Yeah, like there's lots of stuff that, um, yeah, I know that's made me realize that it's definitely the right time. Is there like a sense of relief, like knowing that you don't have to answer to ev anyone? You you have your weekends back, for example, you're nodding away. Yeah, that's like, that's the biggest thing because for years, and obviously you guys are still in it, um, kind of 
all you you get a calendar that's given to you like this is the time when you're allowed to go on holiday but guess what that might change <laughs> and you're always there Stay like oh, i'm not really sure that i want to book a holiday because if i do and then they're like actually we're going to put a camp in there unless you're alex matthews yeah she does what she wants <laughs> <laughs> um yeah most of us wouldn't get away with that so um yeah i just always constantly felt like i was like being told exactly where to be exactly what to wear like all those kind of things and and now i can plan my own diary and and do my own thing so it's really nice do you think it's the people you'll miss because on instagram as much as i don't go on it that often I, you can't not have missed some of the things that people have said i even did my Sorry, own yeah i was about to say big I even did my you. own. i know and felt was, very touched by that there was four whole photos yeah. as well <laughs> wasn't just one. <laughs> we I might come on to some it, of the funny photos that didn't make the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> they were for close friends only. Um, but some people have said some such nice things. Sarah McKenna, she's one of the most caring people I've known. Lydia Thompson should always be on your shoulder and hardline her effort. Such a great friend. Packer, she's tough on the outside, but big softy on the inside. Like you've made some unbelievable friends throughout this that have been very open about sharing that. That must be the bit that you think that'll be the bit I'll miss. But then friends of for life aren't they I guess yeah exactly and rugby's been kind of the thing that's helped me make those friendships but as you say like with a good friendship it'll be something that will continue long after rugby so um obviously not being able to see them as regularly as I kind of currently have been able to will be not so great but I'll have the time to be able to go and support them playing or you know I'll be like I'll come to you I'll come and catch up with you all that kind of stuff so were you, were you surprised by the amount of messages the nice things people not the nice things because obviously you're a lovely person but I feel like it, that's probably the bit that you you don't expect we said a bit earlier you don't appreciate perhaps until it's all been popping up on your phone yeah I think that's the bit that like tipped you over the edge yeah <laughs> that, just just so many people just being so lovely and kind of when you're when you're in it you kind of don't realize like how many people's lives you might have touched or the fact that you got people into playing the game or whatever it is um there were people at the game on sunday who were like oh we followed you like during lockdown and you, you know you were my inspiration to want to actually join a rugby club and and things like that and then you think okay well that's kind of the reason why I'm doing it and everything that I've got out of rugby like I just hope that other people can go on and, and enjoy that as well. To be fair that is a great moment to bring in our good friends from Vodafone to feel the connection so we're asking everyone um, this week you've got to tell us one time that you felt the connection in rugby it could be that it could be anything to do with that but in the last few weeks is there anything that's really touched you? I think you'll have an endless amount of things. Yeah to it's, it's definitely just everything from Sunday. Um, so from when I when I got there, um, the girls had put together like uh, there was a video montage with kind of some of the old girls sending in messages along with some kind of playing footage. And I was already in floods of tears <laughs> at that. Um, and then after the game, Marley did a really nice little speech about me, yeah. gave me a bottle of champagne, just said, like, thank you for everything. And you know what she's like, she can just go just keep going about all the nice things about you and I was just like okay enough stop. <laughs> <laughs> um and then yeah just to like then we went out um and it was just nice to kind of spend like some time off the pitch with those girls that I've spent you know hours training with playing alongside and stuff like that and and that's like thanks to kind of Alex especially because he's the one that said that we should kind of really make sure do that we do a bit of a, a send off. So I'm yeah. really glad you got that because it's very easy to be like, no, no, yeah. I don't want anything. But actually, I think probably having been through that at the weekend, you're very glad that you're yeah, able to I kind think, of sign off on it. I think it's hard because because I wasn't playing. Like it's it's a lot easier if it's like that's your last match. You kind yeah. of say goodbye. Thanks to the crowd. And like that's you signing off. Whereas for me, I've kind of just been a bit MIA. I've been the last kind of six months I've just kind of been doing my own thing, rehabbing um, and just not really involved in any of the rugby. And I just felt not like I was a fraud, but like I just was a bit, right. I was a bit nervous to yeah. like kind of go back and I kind of didn't want all the attention to be on me and all that kind of stuff. But actually it was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> 82 caps for England and two premiership titles. I think you're well within your right to have that send off. Your, oh, I was going to ask you. Should we do it at the same time? Your Vodafone moment of the week? 
my, mine will be so I went to Lincoln Rugby Club last week. Strong. To their sort of end of season dinner. Um, the whole club was there. Um, and one proper grassroots club. So you just kind of return to like what amazing places they are. Um, sat down on my table. I sat next to the ladies captain, Abby. And across the table um, was one of the other ladies. Uh, and I got bought a drink and then I got bought another drink. And as soon as I had two drinks sat on the table, they were like, you're double parked. <laughs> and I thought, yeah. We're, we're, in, back, yeah. we're back in grassroots rugby and I absolutely love it. And I also met someone called Emily who described herself as the wish, uh, the wish Hannah Bottomman. So as in like, wish. I didn't really you understand you it, but apparently <laughs> wish is like a cheap version of stuff. So oh it was yeah. basically <laughs> the cheap <laughs> Hannah Bottomman, which is quite amusing, uh -huh. but they were really good crack. And it was just, yeah, it was just really nice to be back at a proper grassroots club. Oh, that's class. Yours? Similar. Actually, were you at Lincoln? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't at Lincoln. I wasn't at Lincoln. I was further down south. Um, but I actually went back to Drybrook, the roots, yesterday um, for a Gloucester rugby camp. Just showed up, did a little bit of coaching and presented some awards. But there was, um, we did a bit of a QA. and a There must have been about 30-odd girls there. And it was just really cool. And the fact that they were like 10 up to 15 and they have that opportunity now is awesome. And like the first club I obviously played at and stuff, it was just wicked to be home and and to be back around it. So yeah, loved it. Forest. Forest of Dean. Forest Love of Dreams, that. as we say. Forest of Dreams. Forest of Dreams. Frito, should we go back to the beginning? How Please. old were we? Please. So yeah, we first started playing 15, together. 15, Leicester Forest. Yeah, was it? Yeah, Leicester I Leicester Forest remember. East, no? Leicester Forest East. Come on, no, it's just Leicester Forest. Oh, is it? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Leicester no. Forest East is the services. Always, Scans LFE. always says Leicester Forest East. It's just Leicester Forest. You've lied to Rugby me this whole time. No, LFE, I swear. <laughs> LFE, Leicester Forest East. I mean, I'm it dead. might have been when you were like growing up, but it's definitely <laughs> Leicester Forest. Anyway, anyway, but my, but my first um, my first game, I'd just gone along. <laughs> I'd just gone along to watch, and they actually only had like twelve players, and yeah. then they just said like, "Oh, um, do you want to do you want to play?" Um, and at that age, you kind of. <laughs> Mo's <laughs> lost, Mo's lost, lost, lost it. Mo's absolutely lost it. Listening and not watching it. Scaz <laughs> just flicked the bird in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that is? You don't even know what that is. <laughs> oh god! They've even got a muriel of you up in there. A muriel. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Muriel. That's a person. Great <laughs> 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 right idea, <laughs> I bet you've got an ad muriel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm crying. Mural. mural. Yeah. Mural. Mural. Mural is a lady. Yeah. Name. <laughs> yeah, so you went there far more regularly than I did. Wow. But um, we started life together playing in the centre, or this partnership yes. was playing in the centres together. Yeah, so. Because I'd come from an athletics background, all I could kind of really do was run. Hadn't really got a clue <laughs> how to play rugby, hadn't watched it, didn't really know what, what to do. Um, I still remember Tash Jones like yelling at me, getting and attacking. It's yeah, you might be right. <laughs> Carry on. Tash Jones shouting at you. Um, saying like, you need to get in um, an attacking line and just like, just doing like this at me and if you know Tash Jones you know she's very stern um and yeah I was just shouted at the whole game um but yeah they put me in the centers cause just because I could run um and it was really nice to get to play alongside you and then I think I then followed you with the kind of the move to Litchfield which is where we were for a number of years and where you also Lynch played as well, Lynch little man. Can we talk about how great those nights out were? <laughs> Just skipping straight there, are we? Shall so we? good. <laughs> how good. There's nothing quite like that. There is Honestly, quite like it. Like, I think because it was at a time, obviously, before we were all professional, all that kind of stuff. Like, no one taking themselves too seriously. Before, like, boring, so <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. Um, and it was all just based around people having fun and being at the rugby club and yeah Litchfield wasn't you know didn't have the most amazing facilities and things like that but it was our home and grassroots we just we just loved it didn't we it was so you got, good you got, can you recount a favorite night because what's my favorite <laughs> is 
It was one Christmas. <laughs> Mine's George, got to be the same. George Gulliver the, in the Shepherd's, the Shepherd's Crook. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. good. That was the best uh, one. When Justo lost her head. Oh, yeah. When we were all trying to sleep. Were you there for Wasn't that Wasn't that the same one? Uh, it might have been. Miss Piggy night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was the same <laughs> night. Can you remember George Gulliver's one? Because at one point, a message came to all the bar people. Yeah. Do not serve anybody else in fancy dress. Yeah. And that was just basically us. All because of her, though, probably. Yeah. yeah, she was basically dressed as a shepherd with a big, like, shepherd's crook. And she hooked fish hook the bouncer <laughs> with the hook. And he was, like, trying to drag him <laughs> and away. And George Gulliver's only about, what, 5'3 oh, or something? It was brilliant. So, <laughs> so good. So funny. What Very a girl. Funny. What, what a girl. girl. And then the fact that everyone would stay at um, Becky Williams' house. Yeah. Yeah. So there'd be about 20, 25 people in quite a small house you yeah. just kind of like you'd sleep where you just ended up so good and yeah you should make breakfast the next day i know yeah. what, a, what a babe yeah hero so Absolutely good hero. <laughs> did you used to travel from leeds how how many years were you traveling because you so two we, went yeah to we did it together. we did it yeah. for three years um but we took it in turns to drive yeah. so we both had our car at uni um and it it had to like there was a bit of logistics to it and we had to call our parents when we were getting to Leicester Forest East services, which is why I was saying that's the services. Um, and they'd, go, they'd so come so. and um, pick the other one who wasn't driving, pick the other one up. Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of how it went. And then they had to take them to the game on the Sunday. And then the other one would drive us back up. So would you just train on the Thursdays? Yeah, just Thursday night. But do you remember sometimes we'd, we'd play on a Wednesday for uni? You never did. Oh, yeah, fatal. you played semi-final. She got, she got rolled out for the semis and the <laughs> final, and that was Sorry, it. Sorry, I remember that one time <laughs> we came back from Dubai. We were out watching the seven, so Skaz and I drove up, and I went with her. I was at uni at Bath, went with her because she was so tired. We rocked up onto the pitch. She ro like rolled her boots out. It was already like she was already half a sub, time, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was half time. She got subbed onto the pitch, scored four tries in and about twenty got, minutes. And then got, got subbed off. back off. <laughs> <laughs> Got some back off, ladies and Standard. gentlemen. Brilliant. Do you remember Katie Story? Because yeah. Katie Story, former Red Rose, was coaching Northumberland, uh, or Northum Northumbria, sorry, the yeah. team we were playing. And she she spoke to me afterwards and she was like, yeah, when I first rocked up, I was like, oh, we could be in here. And then I saw you arrive with like 50 minutes gone. And then I saw you go on the pitch. And then I saw you score four <laughs> And then I saw you get subbed <laughs> off. And I just thought, oh, this is it. We're done. <laughs> so good. Yeah, so. Oh, Uni Rugby was the absolute best, though. Um, and the fact that we won the, the Bucks final. You got player of the match, didn't you, in that final? Yeah, thanks to Maggie. What position were you then? Uh, eight. What is your fate? So what positions have you played? Um, hooker. Yeah, so I, I played hooker for club. And then I played eight at Uni. That was just kind of like, just to kind of get my hands on the ball a little bit more. And then um, then went and played sevens. And mm. then when I came back from playing sevens the second time, um, moved into the back row. So played like six and seven. And that was, was that a combination because you trimmed right up, had your rig? <laughs> I don't know if that was the reason. <laughs> uh, maybe. Um, I'd played a little bit of seven before that, like under um, Smithy. Uh, just on like the development tours and stuff and like absolutely loved it um but yeah and then then mids just said like do you want to change position and i thought why not give myself another challenge it's a so lot easier life in the back row as well isn't it it's got to yeah be. who wants to be in the front row really mate when those when you guys engage at the scrum and you literally have no say of it your head's just there it's a lot better these days than it used to be, let me tell you. Yeah, and then when it collapses, it's just fully on your head. Yeah, especially at hooker. You Mental. can't do anything about it. You're just going face first into the ground. So much respect, pal. <laughs> um, do you remember that bus journey back up from... So, because obviously we lived in Leeds, played at Twickenham. We played three finals in a row, didn't we? Yeah. So every time we'd get a bus down, which... Same day? No. Okay. We'd go the night before, yeah, but night then before. back up the same night. So back up the same night, and I can't remember which year it was, but somebody, obviously you get get amongst it, and there's plenty of drinks flowing around. I won't name her, but I do remember her name. Someone <laughs> threw up really early doors on the way back up from London to Leeds, which is, what, a good five-hour coach journey probably by the time. And then it stunk. And it was hor in a bin bag. Yeah, horrific. It was horrific. At least it was a bin bag, because you're not have thrown it out at services. 
Well, yeah, but it didn't all go in the bin bag. That was just me trying to make the story a bit more oh, palatable. Yeah. Was it? Was it one of your close friends? Wasn't it? No, I don't think so. Was it? I can't remember who it was. It definitely wasn't me. I wasn't a spewer. Bless her. <laughs> Can we talk about the pineapple? Let's go for it. When did it did it become a trademark? Was it just something that happened, or were you like, right, let's get so, out of this? So the re- make a name for myself. The reason that it actually all came about was because when I was throwing in, if my hair was at the back, I'd catch my hands on my hair. Oh, I didn't so know my that. hair. My I then started putting it above my head, and then I just liked it, and then it just stayed. <laughs> Because we used so. an OG back plat. Uh, I feel like you were yeah, one of the first. Yeah, so I had, I, did I have it in 2014? I think I had it in 2014. Gosh. Um, We've had some hairstyles in yeah. mind. But the back out. plat's the best one. <laughs> very good, very good. I think we're all grateful that you started that trend, <laughs> to be fair. We look a lot better on the pitch. I used to have cornrows going back, Li- like eight of them. When you're Why in the 20s. In the that? 20s, little thin ones. It's terrible. And you Fashion. did, didn't you? Fashion. Yeah, you did as well. <laughs> <laughs> we all did. I think it was the trend back then. <laughs> it was a thing. Even Katie Daily McLean had them. Yeah, I remember doing. Point. I remember doing Katie's. Um, so when I first got captain, we were out in Canada. Um, I was the only one that could plat, and <laughs> having an early kickoff as well, like that's stressful. Terrible. And did you ever bo- mind doing it? I was going to. No, ask that. that's the thing. Like for me, it was just part of before a game, like. You actually got to chat to everyone and it was just quite nice. Found it quite chilled, really, unless someone's hair was playing up, which sometimes it would be yours, Scaz, because really? you've got an odd... Cow's lick. Yeah, something going on that... I someone about that just yeah. the other day, actually. So. Because, apparently, this is a swerving I'm now. sure that was... Um, yeah, it's thrilling. It was one of the good ones. It was one of the good ones. <laughs> apparently... Was it Emily at the dinner? No, we get called <laughs> the millennials because we are old. Oh. And apparently, one of the signs that you're a millennial is that you still have a side parting. <laughs> I yeah. come more for the middle. Yeah, you have yeah, to. Well, that's no, you're actually down, with, down with the kids. Like, I was just explaining if I had a middle party and I have a cow's lick that literally goes, <laughs> it's not acceptable. But people did notice the, from the pictures that you put on there. I've already been rinsed about having have like the Justin Bieber. So good. Yeah, you did used to have the big fringe. Yeah. So you wore it well, mate. It was a different it time. Was back a bit then. Of, it was a style, surely, was it not? Side partings is very 2011, and same year you were obviously got your first cap with yeah. you, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, same we got time. it at the same time. Yeah, good group of you, good under 20s group got capped yeah. at the same time away in Canada. Is that right? Yeah, did you ever think that was going to be a thing? What England cap? Yeah, obviously, like we did A's in a lot. I'm asking you, man. I'm asking Fleeto. Sorry, am <laughs> sorry, I li- you're here every week. Sorry, am I allowed to have an opinion? She also got capped at the same time. <laughs> yeah, thanks, so Theo. Thanks, Theo. You and your side part can come back. Um, <laughs> oh, it's the middle part. Damn it, mess <laughs> up. Yeah, it was Canada, but we played A's together. So obviously, when you're in that system, twenties A's, like there was a really good pathway, wasn't it? So you always kind of aspire towards that. And also, we used to train together. Do you remember? That mm. was actually so good. Whereas then they binned off the A's, and yeah. then it was just like you would get brought in fully into the full senior side just like there you go yeah off your pot the pathway was good we like yeah. went to spain and everything really good yeah, really good, good fun times. yeah good times but <laughs> no oh, did you did you ever think it would be a thing um you were I guess flying when, back there well i you? guess when you get into a's like similar to what you just said you're kind of hoping and you're kind of reaching for for that you've got something to aim towards um but obviously when i when i first started playing had like i didn't even know there was an like an England women's yeah. team when I first started playing and then got wind of the fact that you were doing some pathway stuff and I thought, oh, that sounds quite fun. Can't be that hard. Um, <laughs> and then just remember coming and supporting you. So Was it in our last year of were uni? You? 2010 World Cup? Did you go to the Isha yeah. game? Scazzy's first cap? There no, I didn't go to oh, our first cap. There was a big group of us. Group <laughs> but yeah, I do yeah. remember games at Isha. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day. Games at Isha. Can you yeah. cope that when we first, so that first cap, your first cap, less than 50 people and it wasn't even streamed to where we are now. It was ridiculous. We played at uh, college. Appleby College. Appleby College. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Random it's college. we've gone on to uh, under 20s. Under 20s, yeah. Years and before, we, were back, we were back there two years later. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just random pitch at a really random school. I reckon there was three benches on that hill that people could have sat yeah. on. Yeah. And weirdly... My brother got to see my first cap because he was living over there. Yeah. He oh lived yeah. like five minutes down the road. 
That's so bizarre. cool, isn't it? Madness. So, so weird. And then was your 50th cap <coughs> in America? Uh, or was that Canada Canada as well. As well. Do you remember the hoo-ha with that? Because didn't you actually run out... On my 51st cap. On your 51st Yep. <laughs> no. Because I was too shy fault. to say anything about yeah. it. So, Skaz and Suns, in like, obviously, the whole, like, yeah, we've got there. We, we There was like three different places that we were staying as well. And I can't remember whether it was the first or the second game that was my 50th. But anyway, um, it just hadn't been like mentioned and i didn't really think that it was kind of my something that like, i should me, like idea. say so i just kind of kept quiet and then afterwards i just remember you and Santa coming over to me like oh my god i can't believe it like we'll make a big thing about it for the next game but then mm. i was even more embarrassed that then they're like on her 50th cap against new zealand <laughs> and i'm just there like that's a 50 so I'm just like oh there, no. like walking out, just like even more awkward. But I, um, I feel like there was a re not a reason, but there was some kind of kerfuffle pre that game that meant. Yeah. Yes, I have heard, said kerfuffle and hoo ha in about two minutes. Um, <laughs> before it, that meant that perhaps it wasn't. I can't remember what it was now, but I remember where we were playing was that just that again, random pitch. Yeah, in the middle of nowhere, Waterloo's and they've just put up side. Yeah, it was bonkers. Random places to like get changed in. Yeah, but I remember. I, I think. Since obviously he wasn't playing, so I was captain for your 51st game. <laughs> and I remember being like, Frito, get in front of me now. And I think don't think I walked out for another like Yeah, and I'm just there like, come after me. Like, Make sure you milk it. <laughs> it yeah. is awkward, isn't it? Like how long they leave yeah. you out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's really awkward. <laughs> soaking it up. Especially on your 51st. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would you say, like, obviously that's a really cool memory. Like, what would you say highlight of... Let's go England career first. Um, obviously, World Cup win. It's got to be Strong. the absolute highlight. Um, but yeah, there's like, there's so many, like so many good things. And some of them have been on like the most random pitch or, you know, they haven't all been in stadiums, but definitely the, when we beat New Zealand in New Zealand um, in 2017. 2017. Yeah, so good. What are your, f like, you so if World Cup win was the the best, 2014, have you got any, like, stories or things that really stick out from that memory? Uh, I was actually, so Rocky messaged me the other day just kind of saying happy retirement and stuff, and I replied back with, yeah, I'll always remember that day um, in the semi-final against Ireland, and it was me, her, and Hemo in the front row, and we were just all over their scrum and I was like this is gonna be a good day <laughs> I and mean, I just remember like we looked at each other and we were like yes this is ours and I think that's where the confidence built to know that we could definitely win the World Cup as well um, and yes yeah, so I think that was that just is like a really vivid memory and where did the sevens bit come from because obviously for us perhaps being in the backs traditionally it was maybe an easier transition i suppose maybe with your athletics background but you don't see too many hookers tearing around the sevens field quite so well as you did it yeah um not your average hooker probably <laughs> average yeah hooker. so loads of people had like you know mentioned it prior to me going over to sevens and they'd just been like have you ever thought about it and it wasn't really something probably because of being a hooker it wasn't really something that i'd ever thought of and i definitely wasn't fit at that point like I was quick and I could potentially like sprint have a little break sprint have a little break but that's because of how I trained like as an athlete yeah. but I definitely wasn't sevens fit like anywhere near and I just kind of looked at it and just thought like I, I don't think it's really for me um and then so so never actually got to do any of the kind of fun stuff and going on like any of the sevens tours or doing any of that but um yeah randomly i'd actually gone and played um played at bournemouth sevens not in rugby because we weren't allowed but i'd gone and played netball <laughs> just for a random <laughs> team just because tom was going and um i knew loads of people that were going and i thought yeah it's, it's quite good fun so i uh, went along and played netball and we were driving back and i saw mid's name flash up on my phone and I remember like Tom was driving and I looked at him and I was like, do I answer it or like, or do I just leave it? I don't like, I don't know. And I was thinking he's got wind of the fact that I've been playing netball and he's going to, he's going to have a go at me. And I, I like answered, answered it really sheepishly. And he was like, all right, Fleeto. And I, you know, started having this chat and then 
he was just like, um, would you like to come to the Euros with us with sevens? And I, I was literally like really taken back by it. But I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And then went along, obviously not knowing how I was going to find it at all. But um, absolutely loved it. And I remember we'd, we then did, so the first one was in, I don't know if, if it was Breve or Kazan, but it was back to back. And I remember after we finished the second one, the second weekend in a row, and we were just in the ice bath afterwards and I just started crying. <laughs> and uh, Alice was like, are you okay, mate? Like you've played so well, like what's going on? I'm just so tired. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know. This is just something that I've not felt before. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's something that you just kind of, and you kind of like get used to it and you learn to just deal with that being love tired and yeah you love the pain and, and you'll never forget that first sevens moment mine was in rome i think we covered yeah. it when we had birth on with a shaky hand with trying to drink a beer out of it yeah because you've just gravy. given everything and you've got nothing nothing else left and that's why i was crying in the ice bath and how do you reflect on that sevens bit because it was not an easy period of your life was it with lots of other things going on off field etc Olympics coming up, all of that sort of stuff. It must be something you look back on, probably learnt a hell of a lot from, learnt a lot about yourself, etc. But it, it definitely wasn't an easy part, was it? Yeah. So the f like the first year um, that I was with Sevens was the Olympic year, and I s obviously being from like an athletics background and you know having the opportunity to potentially go to Olympics, I was like, you know, I'm all in this. Like I've got to give it a shot. Um, felt like I was going all right considering I hadn't really played much at all and then ended up getting a stress response in my foot uh not ideal <laughs> so obviously there's not really anything you can do for that other than rest it so got put in a boot um and unfortunately it was uh, a really rubbish time anyway because my mum was really poorly so um you know you just go right what's important to me at this time and obviously training wanting to go to the olympics all of that was like super important but mum being poorly was kind of even more important and i thought if i'm not going to be able to train anyway what's the point in me being in and around the girls when i can be at home with my mum um so off i went with my boo and actually like the the staff was so good about it and they were just like look you go and be with your family can I, that's that's the most important thing at this time and actually I never even really thought about, like, like afterwards, I never even thought about, oh, I've missed out on stuff um, because it was all about my mum. Like, as soon as I knew that she needed me there, I was, I was straight there. And actually, I'll be forever grateful that I was there. Um, had I not had that injury, maybe I might not have been there. And I know that you guys then went on, you had back-to-back -back, um, World Series and you played out in Langford mm. the day that my mum passed away. And actually, if I hadn't have been there for that and I'd have been playing, like, well, firstly, I probably wouldn't have been able to play. <laughs> but like, secondly, the fact that I was at home with my family, like, that kind of was the thing that, that needed to come first anyway. Um, although I never got to go to the Olympics, like, it's, you know, probably wouldn't have made it anyway. <laughs> um, but you d you know you you put your family first and then I went back to playing 15s so I was just like oh that's you know that was a nice year whatever um kind of worked on my fitness a bit fitter for going back to 15s but went back to playing hooker um then that year was was playing really well I was like really happy with my form everything like that and then the week before the world cup <laughs> 15s world cup last training session before we were going to fly um did my knee pretty badly um and it wasn't even full contact it was i was holding a pad marley went into the pad my leg got caught underneath her and she kept running and i ruptured my lcl weird because nothing You'd else ever heard of an lcl i remember yeah. it no one had ever heard of an lcl and most people that do it do other stuff and mm. i hadn't done anything else to my other ligaments just that one had gone whether it was you know potentially hanging on by a thread prior to that and that was just kind of the thing that sent it over I don't know but um yeah like the people after my scan people looking at it were like this is so weird um so that kind of wasn't <laughs> wasn't the best start to to the world cup so I ended up coming out 
a week late, missing the first couple of games, but um, we all know how that World Cup went as well, <laughs> so not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> and then it was actually really nice the following season to then go back to sevens, so give it another shot. Um, and weirdly was playing on the wing. That was a wild Flying. transition. Like, what's that about? Well, I remember when, um, when Bale said to me like, yeah, it was at training. He was like, right, so you guys over there. And then he like named me with all the backs. And I was like, are you joking? And he was like, no, 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 go over there. And I was really confused. And this was one when we were training with the boys at the yeah. Lensbury. And I was actually like, why is he making me go with the backs? I don't understand. And then he was like, sir, I've been having, a th you know, I've been thinking, I want to see you on the wing. And I was like, look, I'm quick, but I'm not sevens winger quick. Like, this is not going to go well. Um, but yeah, I managed to managed to play there a little bit. Um, Did you enjoy it? It there? went really well, didn't it? It was all right. I think I preferred playing um, playing prop, if I'm honest. But um, less of a defensive stress, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Set piece. <laughs> yeah. That was. That was. That I was did the not exact same because I started at centre and then went yeah. to prop, and I was like, "Oh, thank the Lord!" <laughs> yeah, prop was so much nicer. Yeah. Um. So like being on the wing, in sevens, and you've got people that are absolutely rapid. I was like, if they even slightly get on my outside, like there's no way I'm catching them. So I just had to try and read like man on ball. That was the only way that I would ever stop <laughs> them. So um, yeah, it was pretty stressful. <laughs> And then you went back to 15s after. Yeah, so How then that was when I came back as a back row. How hard is it flipping between both? Like, we've obviously all done it, but what? how hard would you find did but you say? It's an it? interesting question, because I think the transition for you, being a forward, mm. proper scrums, proper lineups, like for us, yes, it's still very different, but it's far more similar, surely, than perhaps I the role you had to go into. I also think the contact that you take is yeah. so different. So... When you go back to pick and go training, yeah, <laughs> not Runners my off nine. not my bag anyway. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, being a smaller player, I don't really be wanting to run into like those big players. I'd much prefer being out, kind of playing off yourself or <laughs> someone, you know, out in the wide channels. But um, yeah, I think that was the biggest thing, like the the contact side of it, because like you kind of pick back up with like the scrums, the lineouts, and stuff, but just the heavy contact was probably the biggest like shock when you're going back just going back to world cup 2017 uh, what was your time frame they gave you on this lcl because i remember you flew out late didn't you yeah so you didn't travel with the squad i know we were only in ireland but didn't travel with the squad i think we had a couple of others as well that were hanging on in their early doors um like just mentally how did you deal with that because that's that's quite a tough thing to one be injured then to be told actually you could still make it but you're not going to travel with the squad you're going to do your own thing and then actually join up with a squad that's been together for I don't know two three weeks perhaps yeah. already it w it was a whirlwind let me tell you um so I just remember like when I when I first did it I was like something's not right and Rick the physio at the time was like you're fine you can hop like you're fine and I was like, okay, maybe I'm fine. <laughs> and then, so like, went home, like, I must be fine then. He's just told me I'm fine. Um, woke up the next day and was literally like, I can't stand on it. Like, there's something not okay with this. And it was a Saturday. And I remember, like, I called Rick and I was like, I need a scan now. Like, I need to, like, this is not okay. And I remember Tom saying to me, Tom was like, you're so stupid because this could be, like, them ruling you out of the World Cup. And I was like... I, I can't walk like I can't go and pretend that I'm okay mm. so anyway rang around finally sorted out getting a scan god knows where like had to travel put me in a cab off I went got my scan um when the results came back Rick was like you're not gonna go to the world cup like you're just not and then like after like a little while get another call back and he's like right so actually we might be able to do something about <laughs> no it way. and i'm literally like <laughs> my emotions are like up and down like flipping yo-yo um i didn't realize they told you there was no <laughs> chance yeah, I I know, yeah so like i got told that then it was oh actually we might be all right um i had to go and like see someone go and see a specialist saw someone did all that and then they got me into the iou mm -hmm. and they were like look you, you can do a whole week in here. We'll do everything we can. You might not be okay, but there's a chance that you will be okay. And I was just like, from that, I was like, 
if there's a small chance, I'm giving it absolutely everything. I had to load it like three times a day on top of doing conditioning, on top of all the other stuff they make you do in the IU, which both of you guys have, you've been in there. You've never been in there. Oh, you've not been in there. Um, The intensive rehab unit. Mental. Like, it's so full on, isn't it? But it's like, it's incredible at the same time. And I was just like, right, I'm just going in there. I'm going going to do exactly as I'm like as they tell me. And when I did finally get out there to play, I couldn't fully bend or fully straighten my leg. <laughs> but they strapped it up. They were like, well, I had to sign a waiver because they said that I could fully like obliterate my knee. But I was like, yeah, oh, I'm willing to take that chance. This could be the last World Cup I ever play in. I was, you know, when it's when it is something so big, you think like. It, you're in that moment you're like I'm going to give it everything because that that could be my last opportunity I may never get selected again anything can happen um and so I was like yeah I'll just, I'll just do it anyway even though I couldn't fully bend or straighten my leg I was trying to run around a pitch it's mad the legs <laughs> you go to isn't it? isn't it yeah you pointing to me at the Premier 15s bit because you want to talk about <coughs> Gloucester Hartbury topping the league basically there's one <laughs> question on here that pro- producer Shira has um <laughs> has written which I actually want to know the answer to <laughs> Okay. Um, where's it go? Home semi-final secured an emphatic league win for Gloucester Heartbreak. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> no. This one. Having won it twice, Fleeto, any advice for the GH Massive oh. going for gold? <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> oh, I mean, you guys have been incredible this season. I think... That we wasn't t- me trying to tee you up to bigger set, by the way. <laughs> but w- we were talking about this on Sunday because you win the league and you're like, yeah. oh, we don't get anything for that. We've now got to go and do... Did you the so semi final? The twice you won this? it. Did you more than? Sorry, they've won it more than twice. Sorry. Yeah, but I wasn't involved in them. The twice fleet was involved. Sorry. Did did you win the league as well as win the league? Yeah, do you know what I mean by that. But no one's we ever also topped it other than so Tyler's. we I was mm, also in a final where we'd won the league, but we lost the final, okay. and we played horrifically, and I don't know why we were so bad, <laughs> but yeah, we'd played really well all season. And then when it really mattered, we were terrible. Because I was... They just don't do that. I was speaking to Mo the other day and she was like, it's so weird, like, we've won the league, but you just don't get any credit for it. I know. Because you still might not go on and win the championship. And I was like, yeah, Mo, it's funny that you're worried about that now because you're in the position you've never once mentioned it. Right. (laughs) You sold me out here. (laughs) You sold me... That is not the words I use. I said, uh, like, I actually apologised to Alex and Pax when I spoke to them. And you, I think. And I just said, like, you never realise, because obviously you're not in that situation, but no. there's no like, recognition. And Sarah's have won it, correct me if I'm wrong, but every time it's... Since it's been Premier 15s, nobody else has won it other than Queen. Saracens. Haven't not Queens. top the league. Oh, yeah. They've won the cup, yeah. but as in, in terms yeah, of topping yeah. the league. But for our Bucks, so for the Bucks girls, you get, like, a little trophy for winning the league, and then you go on to the championship. And I just think it's pretty brutal. Yeah. And But I never realised before... Yeah. So yeah. the team that, like, obviously... Most consistent. Have have been most consistent could still not win it. Yeah. It is tough because, obviously, we all hope you go on and do it, Mo. Mm-hmm. You have to say I that. I have to say that. Because I've got a pineapple you. right next to <laughs> <laughs> But if somebody else goes on to win it, nobody's, no nobody's going to remember in 2023, oh, yeah, Gloucester Hartbury top the table, but <laughs> such and such. <laughs> no, I know you will. She's printed it off. It'll be yeah, on her profile. On my bio. Instagram bio, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, how was the weekend? Because your game was all change, down in Richmond, early kickoff, which I actually thought was quite cool so that the Sale girls could yeah. go and watch the boys in the Prem final. We're very accommodating at Gloucester <laughs> the Heartbreak. Um, no, it was really cool. Like, obviously, Sale wanted to go and watch the, the boys in the final, so we agreed to the early kickoff and obviously location change. Um, I think they wanted to play us on the Friday at Sale, but we played Sunday, so it would have been like a ridiculous turnaround. Um, so that was kind of the compromise, even though it wasn't really a compromise because some of our Welshies were up at like before five in the morning to get there. Um, yeah, we were terrible. Like it was a great scoreline in the end, but like the first play well. first half, I've never seen Linny like that in my life. Like yeah, it was um it was bad. We just so many like errors and stuff. It wasn't a great display, but it was good for us because it kind of gave us a bit of a rocket. And also, you have to find a way to win at times. Like we. We went down for the first time, I think, in a, a long time um, and had to like claw it back and like show some character and stuff. So, yeah, it was pretty brutal, though. But then the game the day after, it was unreal. unreal. 
well, the amount of tries scored, unreal. I think like for a neutral, it Defense was crazy. Defence coaches probably got a bit of work to yeah. do. <laughs> Alex was a bit <laughs> fuming nice. about it. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the amount of tries scored and just the whole day a spectacle, mm. like obviously sun shining is suiting the way that a lot of teams want to play at the moment. Um, and it was just, it was class to be fair. I was going to say, and you've secured a home semi <laughs> HOLM. Uh, which if are you, you embracing it now? No. So basically, um, it's all yeah. We always say it, but obviously <laughs> you got to stay neutral. Um, <laughs> yeah. So our pitch at the the Alpass is actually being ripped up after our game on Saturday. So even if we wanted to play at home <coughs> at the Alpass, we couldn't. So we have to go to King's Zone basically. So Fleeto's a Sarri's girl. We can get a different op- difference of opinion on this. Obviously, the Prem final is at King's Home. Gloucester Hartbury have got a half decent chance of being in it. Because haters have been hating as soon as that's mm. been... You can't touch wood on trying to make the final. Yes, I can. <laughs> I don't accept it. How, what, are you, what are your thoughts? Because obviously, Sarah's right, for Marian. so many years... <laughs> Say again. Say the right, Marion. That's a joke. You're real. <laughs> I know. Carry on. Sorry. <laughs> I'm actually going to change oh, your so name in my weird. phone to Muriel. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Muriel. <laughs> Are you actually, Marianne. you yeah. suit Muriel. You just Marion. You do suit Muriel. Put your eyebrows down. <laughs> <laughs> right, carry on. <laughs> this is the kind of girls on the line. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because Saris have obviously been in the final for so many years, never been able to play at the Stone X or Allianz as it was. It, do you, because there was a fair few outspoken Saris players, shall we say. It wasn't when just Saris. No, 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 no. Saris and, Alexis. Alexis. and others. Have you got any views on it? Because we just need to batter Mo down a, just a fraction. I mean, I feel like you'd probably have something to say if it was a, a different. No, I understand. Teams. I like don't need batter down. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, understand. I'm glad I'm I'm not in it, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> impartial. Like, yeah, I'm impartial. No, I completely understand where everyone's coming from, but nobody really said anything about it when it was when we were sat fifth. But I think because obviously people see us as a bit of a threat this year, then there's but a lot. But should they should they not leave it. it a little bit later to kind of? Hey, I understand. Think where okay, well from. we're looking at these teams are in top four. Like where can we maybe yeah play it that isn't going to be like a home yeah. ground for any of these teams? No, I I do understand. <laughs> the other thing is though, like imagine playing at Saracens without getting the home changing room. Yeah, no. That would be pits, wouldn't it? Yeah. So actually, it's a bit of a deterrent from that point because we might not even get the home change room, which would what be would so be, weird. What would be? Is that just flip of a coin? I think so. Is it? It might be if you finish first, so we might be all right, but I'm not actually sure. So I don't know. And Bristol just need to get a point out of their game this weekend v Wasps, which will be Wasps' last, last <laughs> game, <laughs> which is going to so be sad. Yeah, a really emotional weekend, I think, down there. You were telling me, weren't you, earlier that the, there's a trying to get all the the girls back together yeah. for a so they've got like all, everyone that's ever played has been invited I'm sure down. Purdy's on that. Yeah, Purdy's probably Purdy running there in it. her blazer. Love the shirt behind as well by the way. If you haven't noticed product placement turn turn around. No, I've seen it. Yeah, enjoying. Yeah. Um <laughs> but no, they've got everyone that's ever played they're inviting them down and they're doing the cheers on the pitch after, oh. which I just think yeah, they just do really it nice. so right in terms yeah. of that family feel, that family element. Once a wasp, yeah. always a wasp, all of that sort of stuff. I think it is it is quite a special thing and it's actually going to be such a sad day. It's going to be a really tough day, yeah. definitely. And Quinns have not made a semi-final. Well, all, we're all assuming Bristol will pick up at least a point at the weekend. You've had some battles with Quinns over the years. You, you can't be too sad about it. No, I'm not sad <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting how much kind of the dynamics of all the different teams are like have been over the last kind of few seasons and those that have been kind of in those top four positions actually have kind of changed and that's i think that's great for women's rugby it's it's awesome um you know who wants it to always be the same two that are in the final like it's it's great that you know it could potentially be two different teams again from who it was last year no you never know you hope eh? yeah we really hope (laughs) Um, <coughs> and obviously for you guys, Exeter, last game of the season, quite a big one. I know it doesn't, it won't change where you guys finish, but potentially for maybe a rematch down the line at some point in a big game. 
excited? Yeah, we love playing Exeter. It's Susie, Where is isn't it? it? Down at Sandy Park? Our pass oh. at home. Nice. Um, yeah, we've got like a big day, like loads of activation stuff. And obviously, like Susie coming back to where she started it all. So it's always special for us. We love playing Exeter. I love playing Exeter. Um, so no, we're looking forward to it. But obviously it's massive for them because if they need to, I don't know how many points they need, but they're playing for a home semi-final as are Saris. Saris. I think it's quite tight. Yeah. So it is a big day. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, you just want momentum, don't you? I do. You want it, momentum in sports massive, I think. So, Can we talk about the Tiki Tonga, by the way? I missed when it. Oh, oh, did you? Because you were chatting to it. us. Yeah. In the oh, no. Oh, sorry, Carl. Yeah. That's okay. You can go back next week. <laughs> <laughs> what, like, where did it come from? Do you guys love it? Um, so Chippy bought it from like the men's team. So they, I don't know if they still do it, but when he was part of the men's team it was something that they would always do when they won um just to kind of make a thing about winning and to celebrate it because a lot of teams especially if you win more games than you lose you kind of sometimes just kind of shrug it off like oh it's a win and you don't actually really celebrate it um so he made it a big thing when he came and joined like the coaching setup can we just have a moment as well for DMP? Obviously, Wasps and DMP. Yeah. Their final week in the Premier 15s, which is 38 years in the top flight rugby for Wasps. I know we've just touched That's on them, but that is, that is mad, isn't it? Mad. But so if you're in and around the southeast, make sure you get down to Twyford Avenue. I'm going direct to camera for this. I feel like I'm being Elmer. You're doing good. Um, you're doing great. Yeah, make sure you get down to Twyford Avenue for their massive send off. I think it'll be really nice to get a huge crowd down there for them and, and make it really special. And if you're not, if you're up north, get up to DMP because <laughs> it's exactly the same thing up there. I think Alma's on the road. Alma's going to be up there. Yeah, she's going to be up there for the Battle of the Sharks. Ooh, I don't know if that's spicy. an official term or what. It's just what we've called it. But yeah, she's doing a pre-match live show. So if you're in the area, get up there. Vodafone are going to put on a lovely little shindig for us. Beautiful. And if you're not in the area, make the effort, because Elma's <laughs> class. <laughs> <laughs> Elma and Vodafone at DMP, what more could you possibly want? Fleeto, back to you and your ridiculous training schedule. Obviously, you're a PT, and I always think it does make a difference when your PT is in ridiculous nick, because it gives you hope that that is maybe what you'll turn into. But are you excited, obviously, to pick up more of it? Do you love it? What's the Talk us through it. Yeah, it's been something that um I've been passionate about kind of since leaving uni really um kind of on the fitness side of things it wasn't something that I really loved um prior to rugby and actually rugby is what brought it out in me and kind of made me find find the love for that so um yes yeah, thankfully it's kind of tied in nicely while I've been playing and I've been able to do it alongside playing but now I'll be able to focus on doing that alongside my coaching and becoming director of rugby at my local rugby club. So I've got lots of things that are going to be keeping me busy. So many things. So many. <laughs> That's actually madness. Can you tell us a little bit more about it, which rugby club it is? Because director of rugby is no small. Mm. You drop that in as if you were just kind of coaching the under 12s. That's a <laughs> huge job. Yeah, so it's um, it's all coffee and it's actually where my boyfriend started playing fiance, his fiance. Fiance, if you don't mind. <laughs> my fiance started um, Thank you. <laughs> Started playing uh, <laughs> his rugby and like his family all played there as well. So his brother, his dad, his cousins, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, a place that's kind of quite close to his heart and I've kind of been dragged down there for years and years, set up the girls section down there. Started coaching the men's forwards last year. So they're a level six team. Um, and then yeah, I'm taking over as DOR. So I'm really looking forward to kind of making the club more like a whole like with the the club ethos going right from like the minis all the way through to the seniors because I think a lot of clubs just focus on their first team and actually the rest just kind of get left behind and left out and actually I want to make a big thing about kind of everyone coming through and how we can support them and you know I'm sure there'll be players that will play at the minis, we'll go off to university, come back, live in the area and want to come, come back and, and join as a senior. So that's going to be kind of the big thing that we want players to come back and, and play in the senior side as well. And what an awesome role model to have as your director <laughs> of rugby. Honestly. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's too, ma 
too many women no dors of especially like in in the area there's definitely not so i'm inspired already they're very lucky to have you (laughs) Do you think you're going to take on one of these wild challenges? Because for anyone who follows you on Instagram, you're obviously she's in... She's signed up to one yeah, of the she has, has she? What no, have you signed no, up? You're obviously in <laughs> Unbelievable Nick. Haven't. You love different challenges. And you're always asking people, send me something you've done. Let me give it a go. Love trying to beat times on certain things. To me, that screams some form of charity Yeah, I'd bonkers. love to do like, if there's any of, you know, the charity bike rides and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm all about the cycling at the moment. We're going to try do one for Ed, like the Gossip Boys did it. Can I join? 100%. I'll yeah. let you know after I'd the love season's to. done. Yeah, that'd be awesome. At it. Yeah, that'd, that'd be definitely. awesome. I mean, I'm not going to be doing anything crazy. Like Tom yeah. signed up to the marathon and I'm absolutely not going to do a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> not like, a you'll have a stress reaction no. in your foot again. <laughs> um, so like nothing like that, but I'd like to kind of dabble a bit with CrossFit and go to some kind of like fitness events and stuff like that. And if anyone's listening to this and thinking, oh, I'd love to be PT'd by you, you sound so inspiring. How do we how do we go about finding you? I'm giving you a little plug. Take it away. Probably just on Instagram, really. Yeah. Um, I'm still doing a few online stuff <coughs> um, that started up like during COVID. So I've still carried on with some of those. Um, and then if you're in South East London, um, Hit me up. that's where I actually work out of a gym. So can do face to face stuff as well. <laughs> well, Fleeto, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here. Aww. Really, really good to get some insight and um yeah. just wish you all the best with what's next, mate. And Aww, thank thank you. you for everything. Like we've obviously played together all of us a long, long time. It's been it's been fun and best of luck with everything in the future. Oh, thanks guys. We won't be strangers, will we? No, as better they not say, be. <laughs> when you've had had friendship for over seven years, it's there for life. So for life. you're locked in. There you go. Okay, Perfect. great. And it's also if you ever want to dust off the boots, we're organising a charity match where Mo's gonna referee, so <laughs> when's this <laughs> soon don't know we're not we're trying to give me a call give me a call, me a call. i'll see how i feel nearer the time <laughs> uh we have been the good the scars and the rugby in partnership with vodafone the good the scars and the rugby is a folding pocket production produced by the wonderful shira kilgallen <laughs>